Welcome back, Quick Brains. Your question for today is how do you go from broken to unbreakable? We're going to talk about turning fear and depression, anxiety, the things that many of us have been dealing with, especially the past couple of years, into motivation and to power. And our special guest today is Jay Glazer. Some of you know him from uh, NFL Insider. He is a mental health advocate, which obviously is a huge shared uh, purpose for us. And he's also author of the brand new book called Unbreakable. Lessons for Living from a Mental Health Warrior, basically how he turned his depression, anxiety into motivation, and you can too. Welcome to the show, Jay. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you having me. I'm excited for this. So I'm seeing this book everywhere. And our buddy, Dwayne, had you on an Instagram Live, and I know he wrote the forward and he was touting it, how important this book is now. And so I wanted to connect with you and just, first of all, thank you for writing a stellar book. Thank you. I appreciate that. That that means a lot. And we've been friends for a while and I was ballers with him, but we lean on each other a lot for mental health. And he said, you're going to be the voice for the gray. So instead of just writing a blurb, he wanted to do the forward. He said, you're going to be the voice. And look, we all talk about mental health, but who describes it, right? So I want to be the one to really describe it for everybody out there so they can start talking to their loved ones about how, and what I say about the gray, I call the gray, the world, the view, my lens. And that's depression, anxiety together. And it's a constant thing for me. It's, it's, I'm never not in the gray. But the more I can give people words of how to deal with the gray, the more they can have that conversation. They don't have to suffer in silence. Or they can connect with their husband or wife or, or mom or daughter or son or you know, grandkids. It's, it's really been overwhelming. Now, it's interesting. Some people who watch you on TV, they might be used to you laughing and joking. And so you talking about living in this gray and you just describe what is the gray. I think a lot of listeners uh, might be surprised. You know, yeah, and I think really people good. look and you go, how did you live in the gray? You got this great life. You talk about football and fighting and ballers, and, and I do have a great life. Like, don't get me wrong. I have a phenomenal life, but in between my ears sucks. So in my wallet, it's not an antidepressant. <laughs> so for me, what the gray is, it's something I wake up with every single day. And I don't know which version of me I'm going to wake up with. Usually I wake up, thinking the sky is falling, thinking my universe is coming crashing down around me, thinking the world hates me, when logically it doesn't make any sense. But that's just the way I feel behind my rib cage. So every day I have to do things to get myself out of bed. Getting myself out of bed every day is a daily battle. And it is a daily battle. It, this level of gray that I have, which is from my earliest childhood memory. So I don't know anything else besides the gray. It's, and I didn't sign up for this. I didn't ask for it when I was born. Hey, give me depression and anxiety. I didn't ask for that. The only thing I could do is figure out how to, how to beat it back every, every single day. And God blessed me with the ability to communicate. So I'm going to use that to communicate it to others uh, and to coach people through. But you, you said something real interesting. Like everybody sees me on TV laughing and have this big personality. And I kind of call it my depression complex. And I'm a short guy. I don't have the Napoleon complex. I got the depression complex. Like I have to do big, big things and make it's 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 a mask to mask the pain. Yeah. But also the quicker I can get a laugh out of you or even me, the gray hates laughter. So yeah. it slices through the gray to see some blue. I know you talk about in the book laughter and the importance of having a team and and service. I just what, what I want to talk about also is just how raw you are, even on social media. It's it's interesting because a lot of people will see images of people on social media and usually it's this highlight trailer of this beautiful life but you know a lot of us a lot of people are, are they, you could walk past somebody and they can be fighting the battle of their life and you won't even know it right and and what i like um, on instagram uh, i know we're connected we connected there uh you do these mental health check-ins that are extremely raw extremely real i mean what's the response been on that you know, when you started posting, what was the impetus for, for starting sharing something so raw? When I sent the book in, the people at the Harper Collins and Dave Street and the 8th, they're like, oh, my God, you're going to change the world. And when I sent it to Dwayne and some friends, like, you're going to change the world. Well, the book wasn't coming out for a while. Well, mm-hmm. one of the things I used to get through the gray, which I talk about a lot in the book, is being of service. And, like, I'm authentic. You know, I don't use... And you're right, you just talked about it. Our, our big problem we have in a, a world right now 
There's a lot of people who are comparing themselves to everybody else's filtered fraction of a second here. So all of a sudden we think our lives suck. But they, they don't. But we, are, we feel left out. So I wanted to go the other way. I didn't want to wait for the book to come out. I wanted to start helping people as quickly as I could and just be raw and real and vulnerable from somebody they see every day in a different light. And it's been, it, it's really been uplifting. It's me being of service to the world, but all of a sudden I'm connecting teammates. And yeah, that's another yeah. thing. Like, I wrote this book because one of my other pillars is, is like, I need a team. And yeah. the more teammates I can get out there who understand what goes on between my ears, the more of us, we can walk this walk together. So I wrote this book for everyone out there. So you all have teammates, but I wrote it to lift me up as well. Like I'm, I'm a flawed human being that's still working on self that still doesn't know how to feel worthy of being loved and doesn't know how to get any love from the inside out. The title is how I turn my depression and anxiety into motivation. And you can too, because I don't know how to love myself from the inside out. It actually motivated me to go to do all these great things to get some love from the outside in. Mm. And that's the only love I'm able to receive. That's what I'm capable, capable or what I know how to do, but I'm working on myself from the inside out. So I'm hoping at one point they meet in the middle and I can live a life either in a different shade of gray or, or actually some blue, blue one day. Well, I, I appreciate the, the real and the, and the rawness because it, it gives people at home permission that they don't have to be perfect at all, that everyone is going through things. We all are. And that part of, part of this to, to be unbreakable is just working daily, being in love with that person in the mirror who's been through so much, but is still standing, you know, like I what if we started? Yeah. Like those 15 minutes, I lay my head on my pillow at night, man, that's the worst time of my day. Oh. I'm laying there alone with someone I don't know how to like or love or feel and here all I want is love in my life. It's all I want. Like yeah. it's all I ever want. Yet when you don't feel worthy of it, I'm stuck in this one big contradiction. Yeah. One, it's so bad yet I don't feel worthy of it. And then it gets the loneliness and the bleakness gets a little darker here, but I know how to get others out of their own rut, if you will. And that does lift me up. You know, when I was reading your book, I have to be honest, like some of that it gets a little misty going through. And that's why I wanted you on the show to share with, with our listeners that it's okay not to be okay. Some people view emotional and mental pain less dramatic than physical pain. And I know you know what it's like to be in physical pain, being a MMA fighter, a trainer, an athlete. Emotional and mental pain is actually more common than, than physical pain. And it's a lot harder to bear. It's a lot easier to say, oh, my knee hurts than it is to say my heart or my spirit is broken. I used to say that to these athletes all the time. When yeah. we hurt our elbow, we run to the trainer's table and we yep. go run into treatment every day. So we're back stronger than ever. Well, why don't we do that when the biggest muscle in our body hurts? Right? Why aren't we doing that immediately? And by the way, when things are going well, like when you're the heavyweight champ of the world, you don't stop practicing. Yeah. You keep practicing. You keep getting better. It should be the same thing we do with therapy and working on ourselves. So, you know, when my version of the gray hits, it is a visceral physical reaction. So when my depression and anxiety are bad, I feel it behind my rib cage on the left side of my gut. It's not the right side. Interesting. Side. And we hear it, right? Gut punch or, you know. Mm. Feeling in your gut. So I feel on the left side of my gut, and then my joints ache like I was just in a 50 round fight. It's it's um it, funny because I have all these other injuries from fighting, and I'm so proud. When I walk in a room, I look at everybody in there, I like the rest of you because I've stepped in a cage with Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell and got punched and kicked the baddest dudes on the planet. And I've trained over a thousand NFL players, wrestled them all, and I'm proud that I'm missing my L4, L5. I'm proud that there's my L1, L2 is just a little piece left. I'm proud that I've herniated C2345, that I've dislocated that, tore my labrum here, tore my rotator cuff here, broke my ankle twice, broke that seven times. Proud of it. But now I want to be proud of my mental scars. So I'm proud of my physical scars. Now I want to be proud of my mental scars. So another reason for this book, I'm able to open up and be like, there's no shame in this. I'm, I'm proud of this. These are the things I've overcome. Right? So I went through this deep, dark tunnel and it couldn't break me. And I got through the other side. So I'm proud of that. And I want, I really am trying to get us all to see if we can switch the narrative of, you know, I don't want us being victimized. It's you overcame this. Whatever it was, you overcame it. It didn't break you. You came through the other side of that tunnel.
but it's a reminder to everyone who's listening that our scars are, are their proof that, that you are stronger than whatever you're facing at that time. Now, when you're going and you're ruminating and you're by yourself at night, right? The cameras aren't on you and all, you know, your fans and just the, the people and you have those thoughts and, or even when you wake up, you know, first thing in the morning and you're in that, you know, deep, dark or gray place, what's the first thing you do to get, get yourself in moving? Right. Day? Well, I make the decision to get out of bed. I, I, was, I just did an appearance for a company and I was talking about this and a 75 year old man raised his hand. He said, Jay, it's hard for me to get out of bed. It's hard for me to get out of bed to come here today. But you talk about being relentless. I'm re- like, I do go after life relentlessly because I'm trying to do all these great things on the outside to get that outside love. He said, but how do you get out of bed if that you have the same feeling? And I said, the moment I make the decision to get out of bed, like I, that's the first thing, no matter how bad I am, I make that decision. If I'm really bad, I will call someone. Nowadays, I call someone and say, Hey, man, I'm in a bad place. I need some help. Usually I'll call a training partner. Come on over and let's train and let's spar. Like, give me give me more CTE. That'll make me feel good. But I'll now call someone and say, man, I'm having a hard one today. Okay. But once I make that decision to get out of bed, I go after life relentlessly. That's my choice. And, and by the way, that man, I said to him, is this the first time you've, you're in front of your whole company here? Have you ever told them that you suffer from this anxiety? He said, no, I haven't. I said, think how brave that is that what you just did. And the whole place got up and gave him a standing ovation. Wow. So everybody at 75 years, never talked about it. So wow. everybody out there, a standing ovation is, is waiting for you in some form or another by you opening up to somebody, by you telling somebody, your friends are not going to laugh at you. No one's going to tell you to suck it up. No one's going to call you a wuss. And that took me some getting used to it. It's kind of weird too, like who I opened up to and who I didn't. This thing plays by its own set of rules. But there is no shame in it. No shame. We got to start being proud of it. Open up to people and yeah. they, they'll be ready to receive you. It's interesting how vulnerability can make you more invulnerable when you're willing to, to go through and be yourself and be authentic and be transparent. And it's amazing how many people are, our potential teammates are around us yeah. that we, we might not even know. You know. Here's the craziest thing. My best friend since day one in this business is Michael Strahan. Mm. Oh, my baby sister. He is, uh, we met in 1993, best friends. We helped each other in so many ways along the year, uh, so many ways along the, the, these years. About two months ago, we were supposed to go out to dinner and man, the beast just got out of the box. It just got, it just whipped my butt that day. And I called him and normally in the past, I just been sucked it up, gone out, probably had some manic moments, would have done some dumb stuff and just hidden it and covered it up and then felt shame from doing that. This time, I said to him, hey, man, I can't go to dinner. He said, why not? I said, man, Beast just got out of the box. And just, it just kicked my butt. Woke me up, which it normally doesn't do. It just got me. And again, I just felt, felt it in my joints. And he said, you want me to come over? And I said, no, I'm all right. He said, do you want to talk about it? I said, I do not tonight. I just want to go to bed tonight and start fresh tomorrow. And then he said, yeah. why have you never talked to me about it? I've known you for 30 years. Why have you never told me about this? I said, man, I don't make up the rules of this thing. For some reason with you, I had shame. I felt ashamed. But Mm. if I had this conversation with him 30 years ago, look what his reaction was. His reaction was, can I come over? Do you want to talk about it? I got my best friend to walk this walk with me for 30 years that I could have turned to for help. And that's what I want people to understand. Whether you have my level of the gray, or we've all been, we all have something. We just went through a pandemic. We were told to socially isolate, right? So we all have some form of gray, or we know somebody who has it, and you want the words to connect with. This book gives you those words to connect, but connect with those people. And you talk about in the book also the importance. I mean, you talk about the gray, you talk about outworking the world. You also talk about teammates and, and loyalty. Yes, loyalty is a dying art. You know, people nowadays want to climb up so much and climb the ladder so fast. Not for me. You know, when I worked in that giant locker room in 1993, after four years of having no pay, and then covering the Giants for 9700 bucks a year for 10 years, something stupid like that, I walked in and I said, how can I be different from everybody else? Like, and A, I was going to start relationships and not use my pen as a weapon, which the other reporters, the older reporters were doing at that time. Mm. B, I made that decision of, I'm not going to work in my little. I'm now working by a lot. If they're working 40 hours a week, 
I'm going to work 100 hours a week, not 42 hours a week. I'm not working by a lot. I will be the last dude standing. And I was also willing to be rejected over and over and over, which for somebody like me with such mental health issues and self-esteem issues, you only get rejected. That's hard. But that's where if you want your dreams to come true, you know, my dad told me at an early age, be the most loyal person in the room and I work the world and your dreams will come true. Now, my overnight success was 11 years. A big break took 11 years. Like it doesn't, that's just in the movies. It's, you know, how much we keep battling and battling and battling and it's exhausting. Listen, being great is lonely. It's putting in hours where no one else is watching. I heard this recently. I don't know who to attribute it to, but if you don't, you know, sacrifice for what you want, what you want is what you're going to sacrifice, you know, and it's one of those things you talk about in the book adversity. And I know our listeners, we all have challenges and, uh, and I believe my, my two biggest challenges were learning. I, I had three traumatic brain injuries when I was a child. So I had severe learning challenges. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't do simple things that kids could do. And, but those struggles became strengths. And you talk about in the book, you know, and I know we have listeners that are going through challenging times. They're going through adversity. What, what's your perspective on adversity? Adversity is a gift. As a gift. Wow. As a gift. If you, if somebody asked me that years ago, what's the one thing you would give to your kid? I'd say adversity. Let him get through something. That's how you learn. Like, again, I was, I was rejected 50 times a week, every week, but it gave me this work ethic. And also when I finally, like I made that decision, you find out, you find out about yourself a couple of times in your life. And I made that decision to never quit or give up. That's the easiest option in the world. It sits on your shoulder and it barks at you every second of every day. I made that decision a long time ago, man, I would be the last dude standing. I wouldn't give up. That's a lot of adversity to get through. But when I got through the other side and I got my first full-time job for 50 grand, I didn't even ask how much it was for. It was just full-time. And I said, I'll take it. I was like Kramer from Seinfeld with the cafe latte. I'll take it. (laughs) And because for me, it was more than money. It was like, I, I validated myself that I said, I will go through more adversity and get knocked down more than anybody else. And I would be the last dude standing. And that's exactly what happened. That was my moment. So it wasn't as I got more and more successful. My moment was that first moment that I was able to prove to myself that I was able to get through all the adversity that was set my way. Then I was able to use that to fill up my cup moving forward. Knowing anything that I was facing after that, hey, I could do. I've already done that. I went through that adversity. That didn't break me. Hence the name of the book, Unbreakable. That didn't break me, right? So it is cliche, whatever doesn't break you makes you stronger. But yes, I came through that other side of that tunnel. It did not break me. That allows me to walk into any room I want now and go, okay, I'm different. I can handle things differently than everybody else. And and that gives somebody a sense of pride, right? When you fall and you you get back up, when you get back up, that's where we develop our strength. Mm -hmm. Because while everybody wants to be that butterfly and soar new heights and it's all beautiful, the growth happens in the cocoon. But it's through the struggle that that creature to be able to get out of that cocoon it develops its its strength you know the comfort zone is a nice place but not much not much grows there and i admire you because you're another example of you know i don't know anybody personally that i don't know any strong person that had an easy past yeah, an easy know. life i don't well, know one we're talking about the rock the dude had seven bucks in his pocket when he started and he's still petrified in between his ears that he's gonna have seven bucks next week like that fear doesn't go away and that's why I said, like, our wallets are not antidepressants. It doesn't work like that. <clears throat> so it's yeah, anybody extremely successful are people who've overcome more than everybody else. People have been knocked down more than everybody else. People have been more relentless than everybody else. And look, that's not for everybody, right? But if you want that level, that's where you got to go. But one thing I did learn also is I try to get my life not to be goal-oriented as far as what I realized early on, I read it in a prayer book and something that said, appreciate the toil of the climb. Hmm. So the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the journey itself. I never knew I'd be Jay Glazer, Fox and Bell Sunday in the television hall of fame or on ballers or first MMA mm-hmm. host in America, any of this stuff. I never knew. And now, and now a best-selling author. <laughs> I, never, I never knew. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I, I never knew. And by the way, remedial English student right here too. So that kind of blows my mind. That's in the book too, I write about my ADD. My ADD was so bad, I skipped the comprehension part of the SATs. Like I just, man, I was remedial English. So for me to write a book, it, that one is kind of like, wow, because it's so painful for me because of the ADD. 
And you own that though, but you could recognize that oh, yeah. those, like, you know, you, you, maybe your teachers, mine too, certainly would have been surprised if we read a book, much less wrote a book. When I, I, when I first, got, I got diagnosed in 1989. Wow. So I used to have to tell these teachers and me, I was, you know, I had a loud personality. They thought I was running some scam. I was like, hey, I need to be able to take a break and walk out the door. And I was taking medicine. You know, yeah. that time. They put me at Ritalin in 1989, which has messed with my brain since. But like, I had to go and tell them. I had to go outside, take a breath take this pill and they kind of looked at me like mm, what's he got go because we don't know about this ADD you know and even like look I got my first anxiety attack it was on TV 2005 and I'm every week wow it was in an empty Raiders stadium I was doing a stand-up hit and all of a sudden oh my god the wall started caving in and poof my heart started going and I started sweating and my eyes started darting back and forth my hands and I'm like what is this we weren't talking about mental health back then. Yeah. We weren't talking anxiety attacks. So I thought I was having a heart attack. So for yeah. years, I was going to get my heart checked as they happen all the time. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't until a few years ago we started talking about this. And I'm like, oh, that's what it is. So I had to, I had to fight that alone in silence for a long time. And to this day, when I'm on the air having one, <clears throat> and actually we talked about The Rock, he noticed two weeks ago. He actually called me and said, what's wrong? So what do you mean? He said, I just saw you on Good, Good Morning America. You weren't you. And I was having some other stuff go, go down, some family stuff. And I was having an anxiety attack on air. And he noticed. But I was able to share with somebody and not suffer in silence and not fight alone. And we were able to just share that, which was, you know, again, no one's, no one looked, he didn't look at me like I was weak for having it. He wanted to share and help me with it. But it was pretty cool too that, okay, he saw that in me. He's able yeah. to and, and that helped a lot. See, my ADD just got me. I just went all, um, started one place, went to another. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, no. I don't even, I got beyond ADD. I got elemental P. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to, happy to be supportive in that, in that, in that area, buddy. But, you know, that's a, that's a testament when you're talking about Dwayne's showing up for you, the power of teammates, the power of community, the power of loyalty. And we've talked about a lot in this episode, everything from laughter to service, you know, getting over hopelessness and, and shame. Now, I just want to finish. I, I want everyone to get a copy of Unbreakable. I mean, this is a this is a must read for anyone who's struggling in those areas that you learn. We hear about post traumatic stress, but we don't hear about post traumatic growth. Right. And it's not it doesn't have to be flowers and rainbows all the time. You know that's absolutely not true. These emotions they serve a purpose. Um, and so you have something in the book I'm talking about the unbreakable mindset. And there's different there's like five different things that I remember there. But me, I, I want people to buy the book because it's very practical. And that, that's what I want to stress. You have some amazing stories, one of a kind stories that I think a lot of people can identify with or might not know. But what's one aspect to, to un, the unbreakable mindset? What's a shared characteristic that, that you've learned for yourself and others who you would categorize as unbreakable? So there's a couple of things in there. I have three pillars in how to deal with the gray, the mental health, the anxiety, the depression. So everything's prescriptive in this book. But then I also wanted to show people the unbreakable mindset. What we use to train our football players and fighters is actually the same thing I use in business. It's actually the same thing I use to start to start charities I've started. It is this relentlessness. It's this decision. You know, if if you want to be great, find out who the best is and do more than them. It's really not that hard. Find out who the best is and do more than them. Most people aren't willing to put that time in. The other thing I talk about, it's, it's my honor to fight hurt. So things are never going to be perfect. I think a lot of times people wait for things to be perfect before they make a move on something. Things are never going to be perfect. In fact, I kind of look at it and go, man, my ankle is sprained today. I get to train against this dude, spar this guy. Was, I'm at 50%. That makes me more of a gangster. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Even though I can just hang with him. I don't even care about the winner or the loss. I just want to make it a bad afternoon for him. I'm going to go, man, I suck going against Jay Glazer today. And if I know I'm hurt, that makes me feel like, that lifts me up from the inside out. We, you know, I am relentless in everything I do. Like relentless, relentless. The way we fight, again, it's myself and Randy Couture, and I got it from Randy. We just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And I do the same thing in business. Until you finally say, oh my God, get him off me. Like, I didn't sign up for this. Get him off me. And then it's interesting in business and, and fighting and football, I teach something that's complete opposite of how I want us to live our lives. So I want us in our lives to open up about everything, show it all, be vulnerable. Vulnerability is true strength. 
But when I'm in that cage where I teach these players on that field, we're in business, I don't ever show. I don't ever show them hurt. I don't ever show them tired. And I can non-verbally wear you out. Again, by being relentless and just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming for you to go, why is Jay Glazer not taking a stool? Why is he not tired? Why is he not getting hurt? So I could actually kind of start breaking you for the inside out. And once I see that, that's when I really sharpen my weapons. And then I start getting excited about that. And I ramp that relentlessness, relentlessness up even more on it. You know, everybody has an arena, whether it's it's in the ring, it's on the field, or it's in the office or in their home. And uh, knowing when to switch back and forth is a very, very useful part of, of that mindset. I, I just, this uh, just occurred to me in terms of questions. Uh, you know, I'm the memory guy. People come to me because they want to re- remember things better so they could go in the future stronger. How would you like to be remembered? Let's fast forward 100 years from now. Have you given any thought to that? Yeah, as the guy that gave people words to live in the gray. Mm. Somebody who gave words to mental health so we don't have to suffer. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to suffer in silence. I was with somebody the other night, lovely couple. And the wife, I said, man, this is, you know, Miss USA just killed herself. Yeah. Think about that. Most beautiful woman in the world felt that lonely. His wife said to me, that's me. I said, well, talk to him about it. She said, you won't understand it. I said, show him chapter three. And yeah. somebody else was talking. I said, show him chapter three. The words are in there. And she started crying. And I have this saying I got from one of my therapists, that the universe conspires to help us. It is not against us. Even though between my ears will tell me it's against me. It's really not. It's there to help us. And she yeah. said that, that quote about the universe I think the universe put, put me here with you tonight because she was close from what I gathered. And she said, all right, I, I said, you deserve, you have somebody right there. You deserve to talk to about this, telling you how, how you feel. Well, now you have words that you can go let him know how you feel. And he immediately received it and it was beautiful. So I, you know, I, I've gotten hit up by 80 year old grandmothers. If I said this earlier, but first time in 80 years, I could have this conversation with my husband and my kids, and my grandkids about what this has felt like for me. My own mom couldn't grasp it until she read the book. Wow. And said, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize how much pain you were in. It's got to be exhausting. And it's going to allow us to heal a lot more. But, you know, for people to, I want to be that, that person. That's why Dwayne did the forward. He said, you're going to be the voice for the gray. For all of us to kick the gray's but back and yeah. way more of us live in the gray and don't live in the gray. Yeah. And if you don't live in the gray, you know someone who does. So I want to be remembered as that person who rounded us all up together to walk this walk together, fight back and change the narrative for all of us because we deserve it. Yeah. Do you, I want to, I want to thank you for the work that you do sharing your story. Also, you give people real, uh, real hope and real help. Even, even more important than that, that they're not alone, that they don't have to feel like they're alone in this battle or this journey. And certainly that there's no shame around this at all, that the strongest, most successful individual, the smartest, it happens to every single one of us, regardless of the age of stage we have in life. So if this resonates with anybody and you find yourself in the gray inside your own mind, I encourage everybody to get your copy. Make sure you get your copy of Unbreakable. They can get it, Jay, at anywhere. Anywhere, that- yes. Yeah. Anywhere, and where books are sold. And, and listen, I, it, we, we dive into the, the hard stuff, but I'm going to make you laugh a lot along the way too. Our laugh again flights through the gray, right? And, and gets us to be able to handle the tougher stuff. Yeah. And yeah, laughter, certainly, you talk about in the book, is, is one of the antidotes you know, to that. So I encourage everybody, I would challenge everyone actually, take a screenshot of where you're, wherever you're consuming this, iTunes, Spotify, uh, in YouTube, and tag Jay, follow him on social media, tag myself so we get to see it. And I'll actually gift out three copies. I bought multiple copies. I pre-ordered, I pre-ordered a ton just because I knew that this book would be great. And, and, and I encourage everyone to do the same. Get two copies, one for yourself and, and one to gift to somebody else. Because you never know you never know the battles people are facing. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing. So um, Jay, you're an inspiring force of nature, uh, an unbreakable force for good. So thank, thank you for that. Thanks for coming on our show. Your social media that people could connect with you on is, is what? At Jay, Gla- at Jay Glazer. Yep. For everything I do. At Jay Glazer. And yeah, you know, I'm, I really appreciate you having me on. And I, I, you know, I want to learn from you also. So I'm excited for you and I to kind of connect offline here also. There's 
man, my brain has been through a lot. So I know I can learn a lot from you. I, you know, I always tell people, you know, mental health, a big part of mental health is good brain health also as well. So we'll definitely have that conversation. I don't know what I that's appreciate. like, so I want to learn. And, and that's the thing too, like I'm willing to learn from anybody. Yeah. You know, I, I train a lot of people, but I learn from a white belt. Yeah. Um, I learned from world champ. I learned from a, a six-year-old kid. I learned from a 86 year old person. It doesn't matter. But you, for, for me to kind of had sitting here right when you and I were talking and you talking about brain health, I had a, finally I could, I could learn from somebody because I've just been stuck there. Well, you're, you're, and I appreciate you because you're pouring into everybody else, you know, and I think, you know, part of it is self-care, that self-care and self-love is not selfish, you know, and, and, and having that humility and curiosity that's what got me through, you know, and continues to get me through my challenges is, you know, knowing that I don't know everything and the more than I re know, the more I realize I don't know. And having the humility and the curiosity to ask questions that everyone can be our teacher because they've all had different life experiences. Oh. So I want to thank you again for putting all those stories and that wisdom into this book. Everyone get your copy of Unbreakable, this best-selling book. Uh, make sure you post it when you get a copy of it and uh, tag Jay, tag myself also as well. And my book is called Limitless. People ask, how do you become limitless? You're talking about limitless in a limited world. And I always say, we do it, we do it together. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm there, you know, I want to be a teammate for everybody in this community. And so thank you for having our back. And we have your brain also as well. Yeah, I so, appreciate you walking this walk with me. I yeah. appreciate you being my teammate. All right. Fantastic. Everyone, thank you for listening. Make sure you share this episode. You never know who's listening, who needs to hear this conversation that will give them permission and the ability to be able to step out and be able to acknowledge and, and know that, that there's nothing wrong with them. They're just going through this process. And uh, we don't want to shrink our light because it's shining in somebody else's eyes. Now is the time you know, to do the best that we can for each other. So thank you, Jay. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll see you in our next episode. Hi, Quick Brain. It's your brain coach. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Three things to do. Number one, make sure you share this because when you teach something, you get to learn it twice. Update your learning so you can update other people's learning as well. Number two, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing because if you miss a video, you miss a lot. And finally, make sure you hit that bell so you're notified and you find out when you put out the latest and the greatest. One extra thing, if you want really close attention, then text me. Here is my phone number, 310-299-9362. Did you remember that number? 310-299-9362. Shoot me a text and we'll stay in touch. Ask me your burning question. And I wish your days be full of lots of life, lots of love, lots of laughter, and always lots of learning. I'll see you in our next video.